Hello everyone, I'm Emma, and I'm your storyteller for today. Tonight's chapter is from a story called How to Not Go to School, and it's written by Mike Ford and illustrated by Rebecca Sampson. Chapter 2 How to Care for Your Grown Ups, Monday, 30th of March 2020. This morning I was woken up by dripping sound. Our roof has a lot of holes in it because our cottage is really old and tumble down. And when it rains, we have to gather up all the buckets and bowls and bottles to put underneath the drips. I don't mind the drip drip dripping because it makes our house sound like a deep dank cave. But when we're all stuck inside together, everyone starts to go a bit crazy. By the time I got up, Bo had already knocked over three bottles and spilt a bowl of Cheerios across the floor. I had to hop between the shrinking islands of dry, crunchy cereal to avoid my slippers getting covered in soggy Cheerio mush. Bo was being a very good boy because he was already cleaning up his mess by picking up and eating the dry Cheerios from the floor. I poured myself a bowl, but before I could get the spoon in my mouth, Mum had rushed in, shouting things like, don't let your brother eat food off the floor. Where's my phone charger? And, ah, now I've got mush on my slippers. I tried to explain that she should hop between the dry islands of cereal, but she wasn't having any of it. By then, her phone was plugged in and one eye was glazed over her screen, while the other was glaring at me, even though it was Bo's mess. After a few moments, she tore herself away from her screen and sighed. I think we've got a serious case of cabin fever. Cabin fever is what happens when we all feel cooped up from being trapped together in our little house for too long. And as soon as someone says cabin fever, we all start singing, I got cabin fever from the Muppets Treasure Island. We've had cabin fever so often that I've learned all the words and can do all the voices. Unfortunately, Bo hasn't learned all the words yet. He only knows the I got cabin fever line. And in fact, he thinks it's I got gabba giba. Mum and I cleared up the cereal, but Bo was still singing gabba giba again and again, and Mum had gone back to her phone. So I thought I'd go and feed the animals before the cabin fever got any worse. Whilst I was feeding the animals, I made an incredible discovery. Looking after animals is just like looking after grown-ups with cabin fever. Grown-ups are like dogs. Just like the dogs, grown-ups must be taken for regular walks. Otherwise, they start pacing up and down the house and muttering to themselves. Grown-ups are like cats. Our cat, Alfred the Great, is on a special draconian diet from the vet because he eats too much. And when Mum's stuck inside, I need to stop her from snacking too, or else she'll have eaten all the snacks and there won't be any left for me. Grown-ups are like guinea pigs. Guinea pigs don't do very much. Even imaginary guinea pigs are a little bit boring, but they do give very good cuddles. i found that a short cuddle is a surefire cure for grown-ups who have caught a bad case of cabin fever. Grown-ups are like stick insects. It's very easy looking after a stick insect, but sometimes I worry that Stickosaurus might be a little lonely without any other stick insects. There's at least two of everything else. Even I've got Bo, although he can be very annoying sometimes. But Mum doesn't have any other grown-ups in our house. Maybe that's why she spends all day blabbering on the phone about crystals. Grown-ups are like goats. We've got a copy of the RSPCA guidebook for keeping goats. Well, we've got all the pages apart from 45 to 52, because Diane the goat ate them. Anyway, the guidebook says that goats must not be tethered, even though they're fantastic at escaping. You shouldn't tie goats up, because it can hurt their necks. My mum's phone is always needing charging up, so sometimes she sits for hours stuck to the wall, staring at pictures of crystals and looking at the news just like a tethered goat. I decided that my mum needed some looking after, so 
so I hid her phone charger at the bottom of Bo's toy box. This ticked off most of her needs because she was exercising by rushing around the house. She wasn't tethered to her phone and she got a hug from Bo when he said sorry for putting her charger in his toy box. I felt a bit guilty about getting Bo into trouble and also my plan only seemed to make the calving fever worse because by lunchtime everyone was grumpy with everyone else. That's why I have now decided to hold an official family meeting. Here's the agenda I made for the meeting. Official family meeting. Attendees, me, Bo, Mum, Alfred the Great, Cat, Stickosaurus, Stick Insect. Discussion points. What are the symptoms of cabin fever? How to avoid catching cabin fever? What to do if you suspect you or a member of your household has cabin fever? What should we do if everyone has cabin fever? Any other business? That's the end of tonight's chapter. Night night. Sleep tight. See you soon.